Lecture 1.4, Parametric Equations. The photo is the Mount Washington Cog Railway in New Hampshire. This engine was over 100 years old. Most of the steam engines have been replaced by more modern engines recently, which run on biodiesel. The photo is by Greg Kelly, taken in 2005. There are times when we need to describe a motion or a curve that is not a function. We can do this by writing equations for the x and y coordinates in terms of a third variable, usually t or theta. We would have x equals f of t and y equals g of t, for example. These are called parametric equations. T is the parameter. It is also the independent variable. Example one, x equals the square root of t, y equals t, t is greater than or equal to zero. To graph on the TI Inspire, press menu, three, which is graph, entry, edit, and three again, which is parametric. Your viewing window will probably be different. Input the formulas for x and y, the range for t, and the size of the step between points. And you will need to use the delete key probably to change what's there. Press enter. And there's our graph. Press menu, four, which is window zoom, and five, which is zoom standard. And that squares up our graph. We can confirm this algebraically we start with x equals radical t and y equals t, we can substitute in y for t and get x equals radical y. Squaring both sides, we get x squared equals y, where x is greater than or equal to 0, or y equals x squared, where x is greater than or equal to 0, which we recognize as a parabolic function. We can graph a circle parametrically. Remember, a circle is not a function. If we let t equal the angle, then we have this nice right triangle here. And x equals cosine t, y equals sine t, and t goes from 0 to 2 pi. Since sine squared t plus cosine squared t equals 1, we have y squared plus x squared equals 1, or x squared plus y squared equals 1, and we could identify the parametric equations as a circle. To graph in your calculator, press menu, 3, 3, and we get our graph screen. To find the trig functions, we can use the trig key on the calculator. To enter the upper limit of t, we'll enter 2 pi and the calculator will change it to 6.28. We get our circle, although it looks pretty small, so we'll want to change the window settings. Press menu, 4, 1, window settings.
and we can change x min, x max, x scale, y min, y max, and y scale. And then press OK. Now our circle is distorted because the screen is not exactly twice as wide as it is high. So it looks like an ellipse, although we know it should be a circle. So to square it up, press menu 4 B, zoom square, and the calculator squares up the graph. You can watch the direction and relative velocity of the graph by using the trace function. Press menu, 5, trace, 1, graph trace. And then we can follow the trace around the circle. Notice the x, y, and t values are displayed. We use the right and left arrow keys to watch the position change as t changes. So now we have new x, y, and t values as we've moved around the circle part of the way. You can enter a specific value for t, like pi over 2. which we just did there. And it moves the cursor to pi over 2. Holding a key down makes the motion continuous. Change the speed by changing the size of the steps. Menu, 5, trace, 3, trace step. Smaller steps slow the graph down. The TI Inspire can also graph conic sections directly without converting the parametric equations. To clear the screen, press menu, 1, actions, 4, delete all, and enter. Now we can enter the Cartesian equation for a circle. Press menu, 3, graph, entry, edit, 2, equation, 3, circle, and 1. And we have the standard equation for a circle. The horizontal and vertical shifts are 0, and the radius is 1. So after we fill in our values, we get our circle. And notice the equation is right there on the screen. For an ellipse, we can do some horizontal and vertical stretching. So we'll have x equals 3 cosine t, y equals 4 sine t, x over 3 equals cosine t, y over 4 equals sine t. And because cosine squared t plus sine squared t equals 1, we can use the Pythagorean identity to rewrite our equation in the standard form for an ellipse. Converting between parametric and Cartesian equations. We've seen two techniques for converting from parametric to Cartesian. The first method is called eliminating the parameter. It, re it requires solving one equation for t and substituting into the other equation to eliminate t. This is possible when the graph is a function. The second method used the Pythagorean identity to eliminate t by using the fact that sine squared t plus cosine squared t equals 1. Both of these methods only work sometimes. There are many curves that can only be described parametrically.
On the other hand, changing from the Cartesian equation for a function to a parametric equation always works, and it is easy. The steps are 1. Replace x with t in the original equation. 2. Let x equal t. For example, y equals 2x cubed minus 5x plus 4. To change that to a parametric equation, it becomes y equals 2t cubed minus 5t plus 4, and x equals t. In the special case where we want the parametrization for a line segment between two points, we could find the Cartesian equation first and then convert it to parametric, but there is an easier way. We will use an example to illustrate. Find a parametrization for the line segment with endpoints negative 2, 1, and 3, 5. Using the first point, start with x equals negative 2 plus at and y equals 1 plus bt. Notice that when t equals 0, you get the point negative 2, 1. This term here cancels out, so we get x equals negative 2. And this term cancels out, so you get y equals 1. Substitute 3, 5, and t equals 1. We have 3 equals negative 2 plus a times 1, or 5 equals a, and 5 equals 1 plus b times 1, or 4 equals b. The equations become x equals negative 2 plus 5t, y equals 1 plus 4t, and t goes from 0 to 1.